Hello and good morning again. This is Hilary Stupa with Qdabra Software. And today we are going to take kind of a high level look at the UI flows in Power Automate, taking a look at robotic process automation with Power Automate. Um, first, a quick little uh, like history lesson, where it, where it came from, where it looks like it's going. Um, so uh, robotic process automation is used to automate processes by allowing you to connect to applications without APIs. So the API um, is the thing we connect to in Power Automate or Flow um, that allows us to get data or take an action. For example, you maybe have worked with SharePoint actions in Flow, and those are working with the, the modern SharePoint REST API but we all have a few applications hanging around that aren't quite so up to date, some industries more than other. Um, and so if you are in a situation where you do have some legacy application that doesn't have an exposed API that you can interface with, these UI flows give you a way to work with those. Um, initially, uh, the robotic process automation stuff was announced at Ignite in 2019, uh, came out for general release in April 2020. Now, in May 2020, Microsoft uh, acquired a company called SoftMotive, um, and they started integrating with Win Automation, which you may or may not be familiar with. We'll take a short look at that tool today. Um, you can combine your UI flows then with other connectors and actions. So, for example, let's just say you have some crafty old piece of legacy software that's a vital part of your business process, which we've all been there, I'm not judging, um, you would use uh, these UI flows and a recorder to walk through the steps that incorporate that, and then you can incorporate that recording into a larger flow. And now Microsoft just announced the Power Automate desktop recorder for UI flows, and that's in preview right now. If you decide to implement UI flows, I would definitely start by using the Power Automate desktop recorder. And we'll talk about that a little bit more during the demo when I show you the, the available tools. The pricing. Um, so here's where I kind of here's where I kind of get a little sticker shock. I don't know if you do, um, but if you're using attended RPA, which means um, this process is running on a machine that a user is logged into, right? And that user is not touching anything while the machine is running the process. Um, it's forty dollars a user a month, so I could theoretically see setting up a virtual machine, signing in as the user that has the plan, setting up the the, the data gateway on that VM, uh, just so there's a, a, a scenario set up where you don't have an actual user sitting and looking at her screen with her hands folded uh, while, while this UI flow has its way. Um, they also have unattended robotic process automation. I did not when I went through the the RPA in a day training, which I'll, I'll point you towards uh, when we get to the resources section of this. I did not set that up. Um, the, again, the pricing there, uh, $150 per bot per month. Um, I, I, I got a little sticker shock. I, I could see though, if there was a, uh, if you were a large company and you had a process that was consuming a lot of time, I could see where this trade-off of having it done automatically would totally be worth it because you'd be saving the man hours and your people could go focus on the stuff that people need to do. So, uh, but again, just, just be, be aware of the pricing. UI flows in general, uh, just again, we're looking at high level stuff today. Uh, you use them to automate your desktop and, and certain web activities for things where you don't have an appy to interact with. Uh, you use recorders to capture the actions. Um, recording can include input parameters for dynamic data. You can capture output um, and define those as output actions. So your UI flow could get input from an earlier piece of the process and could give output to a later piece of the process. Um, and then the complete flow can be run from another flow. So you create this UI flow, you add it as a part of another flow. 
um, we'll, we'll play pretend and your, your sales team is using Power Apps and they're putting data into a SharePoint list and you also need to take that SharePoint list data and it has to go into somebody's desktop legacy application, right? This would be a scenario where you could set up a flow that uh, runs every time a list item is added, um, and then it uses the UI flow to transfer that data into your legacy de desktop application. So kind of like macro recorders if you're an old like me and you've used those, right? So we are going to look first off at the Windows recorder, um, and then we're going to take a look at a couple of the other tools that are available, and finally we're going to look at the Power Automate desktop recorder. Um, the Power Automate Desktop Recorder, remind me to never plan a webinar during the season of Ignite again, because it always turns out that I start prepping and then that week a whole bunch of new tools are released. So that's kind of what happened here. But I still want to take a look at a couple of these other tools because I want you uh, to be, um, I want you to be aware of them. So I'm going to go over here. Now, if you have not set up a developer Office 365 site, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to paste this link into chat. I think I also have it in the slides. Um, I encourage you to do so if you don't already have one. Uh, that's because it gives you the opportunity to create your own little E5 site. Now, they will tell you here that it lasts for 90 days. Um, I have I have one an older one that I've been running for, I think, three years now um, without them turning it off. They always automatically renew it, probably because I'm actively using it. Uh, so at any rate, I would encourage you to, to, to set up a developer subscription to try some of these things so you're in a scenario where you can test these without worrying about accidentally signing up for something that's going to cost 150 bucks a month, right? <laughs> it's just, it's, it just makes sense, at least to me. I'm always a little concerned about what I'm signing up for. All right, so let's take a look at the Windows Recorder first. So we're going to do a new, um, I always tend to start with Instant because it's so easy to change, you know, we'll just do a new Instant one. Now, if you don't have the desktop recorder installed, you'll get prompted to install it. Um, and there's extensions that get installed as well. You may also end up having to restart your browser uh, to get this, this recorder to show up. Um, I, had, I had hit and miss luck. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. So here I'm going to select run a flow built with Windows Recorder. Okay, you can see it's got the big premium, the big premium sign there. Choose an option or create your own. And I'm going to hit create a new UI flow. Now we could have also um, gone to UI flows directly. And we're going to call this test. Uh, I'm going to call it test one, guys, because I don't know how many things I've got named test. Okay, so the first thing we do here in this UI flow that's going to use Windows Recorder is we can uh, set up uh, inputs, and I'm going to call this uh, text one uh, description. They don't let you get away with not with not having a description. You don't have to have inputs; they're voluntary, right? And then you can click next, and we've got start your UI flow. So this is the default kind of start trigger. You don't get to do anything to change that. Here's our choices, right? So when we're doing a desktop, a Windows UI flow, our choices are the recording app or running a Win Automation process. We'll look at Win Automation in a second. So we hit Record App. Now, if you don't have it installed, the first prompt you're going to get is going to look like this: Download and install package, enable browser extension. My experience was that even once I had downloaded and installed it, it didn't necessarily update automatically. So it wasn't, when I needed an update, it wasn't being registered as being installed. I ended up actually having to reinstall it. So we hit launch recorder. Here comes our recorder, hopefully. There it is. Hopefully you can see that up at the top of the screen. I'm going to check the audience view here. Yeah. So it's up at the top of the screen. We can see a record button. Um, you know, <laughs> we can always count on calculator, right? And so we hit record. If we want uh, inputs, we can 
we can use those here. I'm just going to type in some text. You can see you've got to wait until this blue highlight comes up for each item. If you don't, uh, it won't record plus six, three equals, right? Simple, simple, kind of, and we're going to hit done. Now I had, I don't want to go into a ton of detail on this recorder, first off, because I had some trouble with it. Second off, because I think it's deprecated at this point. I think Power Automate Desktop is the way forward, and I think that's what should be used for new flows. Um, and it is, in all, a better tool with a better recorder. However, you may still run across older documentation or tutorials uh, that show using this recorder, so I wanted to make sure you were familiar with it. You can see uh, these things are theoretically uh, editable. Let's, let's just take a quick look at one. It shows you a screenshot of what you did, if all went well. And then here's our here's our code that we can edit. Now, maybe you guys are, are more adventuresome than I am, but I can tell you what, there is nothing in the world that would convince me that I wanted to edit that code, nothing. Um, I would re-record six times before I would try to, <laughs> before I would try to modify these steps. So if you're adventurous, have at it. I'm not adventurous, um, or at least not that adventurous. So if we had any outputs that we defined in our recording, they'd show up here and you know we can test, big sign, don't interact with your device. Um, so you end up kind of folding your hands, and I think I probably should have had calculator open. Oh no, it's gonna open it for me, fabulous. And it's gonna type in whatever I typed in before. It's not gonna do it fast though, I can assure you. So here we go. So Obviously, you would not want this um, running on a machine where you had a user trying to work, right? That's just pretty pretty clear to me. Okay, so that is the that is the Windows recorder. Pretty straightforward. Again, I wouldn't recommend using it. Uh, it's a little finicky when you record. When I went through the initial RPA in a day training, it took me four tries to to get that uh, recorded correctly. It was using a, uh, their own uh, sample legacy app. That could have been some of it. It wasn't something I was familiar with, but yeah, it was challenging. Another option available when we build a UI flow is using the Selenium Web Recorder. If you are going to use this, and if you are going to use Edge, be sure that you use the plugin for Edge. Otherwise, you will be like me and you will not be able to start the recorder and it will be distressing. So you just keep that in mind. So if we go to our UI flows here, we'll, we'll do this a different way now. You can see I'm not at all, I'm not at all afraid to click start trial because this is my, uh, this is my dev, <laughs> my development site. So if we go to UI flows here and click new, we can select, again, this is what we just did was the Windows recorder. Uh, you can select web app and we'll click next. All right, and I'm gonna name this uh, test two. And just to be contrary, I'll do this www.google.com there. And we're only going to look at this for a minute too, right? Because I also feel like this is probably deprecated. So it uses the Selenium IDE. Uh, if you have used that before for web testing, you may be more familiar with it than I am. Again, it's got a recorder, so you can hit record. It opens up the thing you're doing, uh, tells us that it's recording. Um, I'm going to type in testing. You guys must love how creative I am here. Okay, and then I'm going to. Uh, close my window, I guess, and consider myself done with my recording there. Okay, so you can see you can just kind of go through and record something. Selenium also has uh, inputs and outputs, you know, variables and things like that. Again, this is not something, um, let me go ahead and hit leave. This is not something I would probably bother installing or working with just because I think that it's all, all moving to the new uh, Power Automate desktop. Finally, when we were looking at desktop flows, we saw the option of using Win Automation. Win Automation is pretty cool. And if you already had recorded, and this is nice, right? I've got it up right over the screenshot. That's not confusing at all. Um, if you already had recorded flows using Win Automations, then fantastic. You know, you can run them as long as you have 
a personal gateway set up. So you need to have a gateway set up. Why? Because the win automation process is stored on your local machine. Therefore, uh, in order to connect to your local machine, you have to have a data gateway. Um, installing the data gateway is, is pretty simple. Um, you know, you can click new gateway and it takes you to the downloads. You download that, you install it. Um, you don't have to do much configuration. You sign in using your Office 365 account. You know you're successful when you see a gateway show up over here. The one gotcha I found with that was yesterday. Uh, my gateway disappeared. In the gateway itself, it said it was up to date and fine, but it turned out that it did need to be updated. So I reinstalled, it updated my gateway, uh, and then it was fine again. So just kind of a, a little heads up to keep in mind. So back here in Flows, if we do a new desktop app, maybe, you click again, we'll name this Test3. Uh, I'm just going to go next. Oh, it doesn't like me. It's still angry about what I did before. Okay. It's because I, I canceled that other flow in process, I think. As you can see, these things are, are, there's a certain level of imperfection going on here. That's fine. Let me see if I can figure out how to close that. Save. No, we're just going to say close. And we're going to refresh this. We'll try again with a refresh. At any rate, one of the options we saw when we were adding an action, in fact, maybe this will let me edit it. We'll try that instead. When we go and we edit this, if we go and add a new step, one of the options we had was win automation. You can run a win automation process. You have to enter the process path um, and the command line arguments. And, and then you can run your recorded the, the process you've got recorded here. The process designer here, um, there's a macro recorder, a web recorder, and then a process designer. And this you're gonna see is very similar in the, the Power Automate desktop, which I my suspicion is that it's a, a version, right, of this. So if we go looking here, we can see we've got all these different all these different actions. We've got conditions, loops, wait, you know, message boxes, uh, file and folder actions. Um, you know, you've got, there's a certain number of applications kind of built in like email. And I thought there was, a, yeah, Excel, Outlook. Okay, so you've got various actions that you can just drag and drop. Um, and, you know, you've got your various settings. You can say okay. And so you can build your process here. You can move things up and down and so forth. And then you can run that process from your uh, UI flow. Finally, and that's, and again, I, I feel like Win Automation, if you already had processes existing in that, it's great that you can still run these. But I don't think that if I were starting from scratch, I don't think that's the way I'd go. I think I'd start with the newly announced Power Automate desktop. Now this says it's in preview, um, and preview I think makes us always a little bit nervous, um, just because you're gambling. Uh, <laughs> you're gambling in a few places. You're gambling on uh, whether or not the features that are included are stable. Uh, are the features that are included going to still be there? You know, down the road. The reason I would probably, if I were starting fresh recording UI flows, the reason I would probably assume that Power Automate Desktop, even though it's in preview, is the right way to proceed is simply because it's obvious that a huge investment in time, man hours, and effort is being made in this robotic process automation piece of Power Automate. And I believe that this desktop is kind of a natural extension of that effort. You know, I, I don't see, um, I don't see Microsoft wanting to stick with that janky web recorder or the, you know, the, the things that are based off of other people's branded things like Selenium or, or so forth. And also if you are here and you go and you create, um, let's go back here again. Right, if we delete this step, okay, and let's do a new step. And we do UI 
flows. That is not where I wanted to be. Let me go back here again. Sorry. It was here that I wanted to be. If we go back to UI flows and we do new, see how this is so much bigger than the rest? <laughs> So that was one of my cues, right? I, I went and opened this up the other day after they announced Power Automate Desktop. And the fact that they've got this, I, I know it says preview, but the fact that they've got this in larger font and at the very top, it just encourages me to believe that this is the direction things are headed. So I, I could be wrong. I, I'm very sorry if you end up having to, to re-record things, but I'm pretty sure this is the, the path forward. So again here, run a flow built by Power Automate. We can create new, we can, we can uh, use one we've already created. Now, if you do not have Power Automate Desktop installed, you are gonna see this, right? You're gonna see this, you're gonna get the app, and you can see they've got you know launch again there as well, kind of listed as one of the things you may have to do, right? So it's just sort of um, keep in mind that when you first install it, you may have a you may have a hiccup or two. So here I built one uh, based on uh, documentation on the Microsoft site, and I did not record steps. I built it using the process builder. In general, I've struggled with uh, any of the recording options. <laughs> I've got another one where I recorded some web stuff, and I'll show that to you. This one uh, was a little more was a little more straightforward. It's simply we've got some input variables here. These are very easy to add. You just use plus. You know, you pick whether it's input or output. You fill out some information. Uh, input variables you can maybe see are, are gray, output or white. Um, you can edit them. You know, you can put in uh, a default value. You've got the data type and so forth. Um, output variables you've got no option for a default value because they're output variables. Um, you have to include a description. You've got uh, other options here, find usages, which I think is is nice, right? If you look down here, you can see where your variable is used. So if you're going to go change it, you know what you're going to impact, right? I think that's pretty handy. Um, all of these steps just came from the actions over here, which honestly, these actions probably look a little similar since we were just looking at when automate. And that's... Um, you know, you can see we've got very much the same types of things here. We've got variables, we've got conditions, um, loops, wait, message boxes, and so forth. So this guy is set up. He's just getting the current date and time, it's converting it to a particular format, and produces a variable, stores it in formatted date time. Um, we're getting a special folder. It creates a variable. Right. All of these things are pretty straightforward. We're creating a folder um, called countries on my desktop. Right. And you'll note that some of these have an on air option, which I think is also nice. You know, you've got the option to retry. Um, you can do some advanced things here. Right. You, you maybe you want a certain rule if the folder doesn't exist. <laughs> Let's go create the folder if it doesn't exist. So forth. Okay, so all of these things are, are very simple. And all this is going to do is it's going to create a folder. Let's see if I still have that countries. I do. I still have countries folder on my desktop and it's empty. So it's going to create a folder. Since our default value here is France and our default file text is la la la, that is what we're going to get. So if we just run this. Now I set this up with a, um, a message box at the end so that when we run it from uh, flow, <laughs> we'll be able to see when it's done. So you can see it's all done. It's popped up a message box and we've got this new folder and we've got this new text file and it's got our text in it. So I've got a demo flow that uses this and I'm gonna just get out of here. Yep. And here's my little demo. All right. And so let's take a quick look at this guy. So here's my demo flow. I've got, I'm manually triggering, triggering a flow, um, doing a country and file text that I pass in. Uh, I put in a little 10 second delay uh, just so I could switch over uh, to the folder system so we could watch for it, give myself a second. Um, now I'm running the flow. You can see I'm passing in the country and the file text. And then the two output variables that we've got here are 
we've got the count of files in our folder and we've got the actual file name. So if we pop back over too many icons in the taskbar, you can see here's my output. You see by the little shiny arrow that it came from our UI flow. And here's my other output. So if we go and test this, now I'm gonna be prepared. Okay, I'm gonna perform the trigger action. I'm gonna say test. Now last time we used France, so this time we'll use Greece, and this is my new test. I have to move you guys again. I'm going to hit run flow and I'm going to go pop open this folder. Oh, my folder's in the wrong place. Well, hopefully moving my moving my mouse didn't interrupt it. I just want to I just want to keep this up. Now, when I was testing before, it was taking about uh, 30 seconds for the flow to actually finish running. And then I've also added on that 10 second wait. So what we're going to expect to see here at some point is either that my flow fails or we get the pop-up. Can you guys see why I added the pop-up, right? In real life, we don't want this, but my goodness, for, for when you've got a few things going on at once, it's sure nice to know when you can put your hands back on your, back on your mouse. All right, so there's my new file. I mean, theoretically, what we just did there, you could just use the file system connector for. However, the, the point is that we could use, um, the point is that our, 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 our desktop, sorry, there went my brain. The point is that our desktop thing here, our UI flow could be more complicated. It could be doing something more realistic. It's just, I was not capable of thinking up anything more realistic. So right now there's only one file in the folder and we've got our, our file path back. Um, I also tested the web recorder. I'm just going to close this guy up. Mm, no, I didn't make any changes that I care about. So I also tested the web recorder briefly um, and I did record a, uh, a little flow I'm hoping this is about to open. There we go. I did record a little flow that just goes to basically Google Translate and translates a piece of text. However, once again, you know, there's stuff available with appies that do that. The, the point is just that you can launch a web browser, you can populate text field. I had something here that wasn't working. It's great because I could just disable it, right? So I just turned off, this was something that was recorded that was causing my flow to fail. And I was able to just turn it off and check and see if that worked. Um, I found I found this a lot easier to deal with than um, what we were seeing in that Windows recorder where we recorded the UI flow from flow. And, and it had all that big long thing of text that we could theoretically uh, that we could theoretically change. So again, I've got you know a couple variables, an output variable for the result, an input variable for what I'm translating. Uh, there's a couple of flow variables because I'm, I'm getting my clipboard test. This is the, the link to copy. And then I'm storing it in my result. So again, the web recorder, you can see there's a web recorder and desktop recorder up here. Um, it does show, I should quit moving my hands. <laughs> It does show the start and the end of what was recorded, you know, so you've got that. Um, it is not typing in my my information, but it was yesterday, I promise you. So I'm going to just keep my hands off this in case it does come back to life, it, but it may be that I had already interrupted it too much. At any rate, you can see why I would suggest that you set up a dedicated machine if you end up doing something like this. So this was fun to watch, but I think I'm going to make it stop now. Oh, there we go. It, it was it was angry from the very beginning. Failed to assume control of Chrome. Yeah, because I was moving my hands. It's 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 fussy, right? It's not just me. Here, let me let me hold my hands out of the way. Um, yeah, there's a there's a fussiness there. It is nice. I think the airs here are nice. I I definitely preferred them to the airs in the UI flow, uh, the recorded one. When I recorded UI flows and then tested them, I I found that the airs were just about incomprehensible. Whereas here the air was obvious and I could I could understand it. Now this copied this actually pasted the last result on my clipboard. So I don't think it's actually clicking the copy link even though it pretends to be. Neither here nor there. As you can see this was a pretty made up example. All right. So at any rate, if you decide to give this a try, I think Power Automate Desktop is the way to go. The usefulness of this 
I'm sure it's there, right? I'm sure that there are industries that I don't know about, and I'm sure that there are organizations for whom this is truly a game changer. Uh, for me personally, uh, lacking imagination, not having anything truly legacy around that's business critical, um, I, I stumble over the price point. I stumble over the complexities of, of recording and getting my steps to run smoothly. And I just recently stumbled over the fact that they changed the, the whole kind of interface. That doesn't, that doesn't negate that this could be of value perhaps to you, um, certainly to, to large organizations that have stuff that they just can't do otherwise. Because if there's a way to keep somebody from having to do what's effectively double data entry, we should always take that, right? Because um, I could type in the wrong date, whereas if we can do it programmatically, so the data from one place is getting ported to another place without a user rekeying it, always the path ahead. So these links, this RPA and a day training, if you go look it up, there's two versions. Uh, don't use version one. Version one uses the, the initial recorder. It uses the uh, Selenium recorder. And there's just, I don't think there's any point. Uh, version two of RPA and a day training, and that's what this link is to, that has the latest. And it's okay. Um, it's okay. I would. I mean, it's it's probably worth the walk through. Uh, I found some of it a little contrived, but I think that's often the case with training. I think it's really hard with training to come up with a use case that suits everyone's needs. So, is it worth your time? I'd say if you think that automating processes that don't have appies is something you need to do, then yes, it's worth your time to walk through the training because it'll get you familiar with the tools. Um, there's Microsoft UI flow documentation. I included the Win Automation tutorials. I wouldn't I wouldn't bother with those now that, that we've got the new tool, the Power Automate Desktop. And there's Selenium IDE documentation. And again, uh, if you're going to learn this stuff, I sure would just stick with Power Automate Desktop. If you've already got stuff that's recorded in Selenium or if you've already got stuff that's recorded in Win Automation, then it's great that you can integrate those things, right? Um, but I wouldn't start fresh with them. Does anybody, I know this was super high level. Um, again, that's intentional. I just wanted you guys to see the tools and, and be familiar with them. Um, so you can make a decision as to whether or not this is something that's useful to you. Uh, if you've got any questions, speak up. If you have questions later, you guys know where to reach me. It's uh, Hillary, H-I-L-A-R-Y dot stupa, S-T-O-U-P-A at qdabra.com. And, or, or you can email support at qdabra.com. So, you know, if you've got questions, uh, holler. As you can see, I'm not claiming any expertise in this new technology. Um, I just wanted to make sure we all kind of knew what it looked like, right? Um, Pay the bills here. Don't forget about Forms Viewer. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. We're constantly adding great features. Uh, you can make your forms look brand new and fresh with, you know, tools like CSS and adding JavaScript and so forth. So it's definitely worth taking a look if you've been using InfoPath. Um, do take a minute and fill out the survey. I have a question in there about whether or not you see this, these UI flows as being something that might be useful to you. And I really am curious because as you can tell by the things I've said, by the non-politic things I've said, I'm struggling I'm struggling with envisioning use cases, at least for us, um, or at least for the clients I've been working with. And But that doesn't mean there's not use cases. And so, yeah, if, if you're interested in these, take a look. And the other thing that's in the, the questions in the survey is my usual, you know, begging for ideas. So if there's something you'd like to see about the Power Platform, you know, Power Apps, uh, Power Automate, and, and Power BI. We have a Power BI expert on hand, and, and which is not me. And, and just let us know, because we're interested in presenting stuff on these newer technologies that's useful to you. Um, and I know not everybody's using newer technologies right now, because that's the way of it, right? We're, we're using what we've got available to us. So do let us know what you need to know more about. And have a fabulous October. I love a fresh new month. So, so let's all head off into to fall with light hearts and, and our masks on, right? And take good care. 
and uh, let me know if you have any questions and we'll talk again soon. Thanks for coming.